And just like that, the holidays are over. What's going on, everybody? It's Brendan here. I hope you had a wonderful holiday. And boy, they come and go really quickly. Mine was a little bit, I would say hectic, but a lot of that is self-induced. But it has come and it has gone. So you and I are going to get caught up on some of the back end of my eBay business. And that is a what sold. It's been a while since I've done one. Maybe July, I think, was the last time I did one. So I'm going to feature in this video for you 20 items that I sold in November, but I will talk about just some front end numbers from September and October and the things that I had going on. I won't feature any bolos from those months, but then I will feature 20 items that I did sell in November. We'll talk about the big picture, what I did in volume, what my cost of goods was for all of those months, and then you know a couple of things in between. But we have to get caught up, so let's talk numbers. Okay, so let's start with September really quickly and go over a couple of core numbers. I did 10,500 in gross sales, 7,000 in net, and sold 183 items. My average sales price at around 57. Not bad. My cost of goods is higher this month. I'll talk about that in just a second. So I spent $2,300 on cost of goods. So that might make the net, you know, after you subtract the cost of goods, look a little bit lower. But this month, the following month, and the two months pre after that, I purchased some retail arbitrage items, which normally you have to spend uh, a little bit more on than your average you know, $5 thrift store item. So I bought a toy collection, all brand new, that I'm going to buy and hold. I bought some trading cards that I'm also buying and holding. So I spent more money than I normally would on things that I haven't been able to list or sell yet. So my cost of goods looks a little bit higher than it normally is, and that's to be expected. Didn't see any of that return in September, but you know, I don't work more than 25 hours a week on this eBay store. So these numbers are still pretty good. Let's move into October up a little bit. 11 to 7,500 in net. And my average sales price right around the same, almost 200 items sold. The nice thing about October for me is I didn't work for seven straight days because I was on vacation. So I only worked 80 hours this entire month. And when we're measuring, where I started with active listings, which was around 1400 in January to where I am now, which is around 1800. I'm starting to incrementally towards the end of the year here, see the increase in sales relative to the increase that I have in my active listings, which is very positive. So I figure I lost about $2,000 in sales by going on vacation. Although I did not set my store uh, on vacation mode. Historically for me, when I do that, it halts my sales like completely. I make no sales. So what I did was I adjusted my handling time. And rather than put my store in vacation mode, I moved it to four and five day handling. So I still was able to collect some sales, but what happened and what I noticed is I get reduced visibility and your mileage may vary or you know you might see some similar uh, things happen to you in your store when you when you do these things. But what I saw was I saw my visibility and search go down a little bit because of the four day handling. I feel like eBay was giving priority to buyers who were shipping same day or shipping one day handling. So I lost some money in October because of making those moves. But 11.2 for working 80 hours the entire month is incredible. So I'm definitely not complaining. But I'm starting to see the sales that I'm supposed to be seeing relative to the amount of active listings that I have increased since I started this year. All right, so here's what November looked like for me. I did 13,300 in sales, in gross sales, 9,000 in net. My average sales price was up about $5 per item at 61.71 and I sold and shipped 215 items. This is much better November than it was last year. And the, you know, the th four or five day period during Thanksgiving, I worked maybe an hour just to do some shipping. I did no listings, no sourcing, no any of that. So wasn't working a ton this month, a little bit more than October. But again, we're starting to see that increase in sales, 13.3, which is, again, I should be about 14,000, 15,000 for having 1,800 active listings with the item makeup that I buy, the way I price. And I'm starting to see that at the end of the year, which is really, really positive. There might be a lull in, in uh, December for me. There always is because I get slower during the holiday. I don't get busier during the Christmas holiday. So we'll see what happens in December. I'm already way up than I over what I was last year, but these are great numbers. So we're going to take a look at 20 items that I sold in November. 
And um, yeah, let's jump into it. Okay, so this first item here, this thing is really cool. Dream Life, I mean, it's super basic, right? It's a plug and play game from 2005. You plug it into your TV, pull the remote out of the uh, thing and start playing it. It looks very bare bones video game related item. I don't know exactly why, what is making this so popular, but I think it cost me maybe $4 at a thrift store and I ended up selling this thing for $80. It did take six weeks to sell, but I'll take you through some of the pictures. If you don't find it with, if you find it and it doesn't have the remote on the inside, you can see there, you might get 20 to $25 for it. It will sell, probably take a little bit longer. So if you're getting it for a buck and it doesn't have a remote, you might still take a chance at it. But if it comes with the remote, I got $80 for it. The comps are really in line with that pricing. And I have a picture of it working at the end of the listing just to you know kind of push the buyer over the edge prove that it will work at least uh at least it did for me when you get home and get it plugged in but this is definitely a bolo 80 bucks keep your eye out for dream life okay next thing here eddie bauer jacket there's a lot of things i like about this first of all it was very clean 2xl i don't know if it's truly vintage or not i didn't put vintage in there but it's not it's the 1936 skyliner model or style of jacket with the leather and the quilted the fact that it is a 2XL, I love. Don't sleep on Eddie Bauer as a brand. It's really obvious. You know, Arcteryx, Patagonia, everybody knows about that right now. But if you struggle to find those types of brands in your area, don't sleep on L.L. Bean. Don't sleep on Eddie Bauer. This is a great example of a coat that is super valuable. It only cost me $9 and I got full price for it. I sold it for $150 and it only took five days to sell. So it was a very fast seller. I got positive feedback for it already. And I wanna show you a picture of what the tag looks like so that you can look for it as well. Again, not everything's gonna be a home run, but this is one that you might wanna pay attention to. So that's what the, that's what the um, Bauer Down tag looks like. And then let me show you the Skyliner tag on the inside. That's what that looks like right there. 1936 Skyliner model. And I don't, maybe it explains it right there. I was too lazy to read it. So, we're just gonna click off and keep going, but don't sleep on Eddie Bauer. That was a big sale and it sold quick. All right, next one here. All right, let me be honest with you. I probably circled the store three, four, five times and I could see this pattern hanging off of one of the like new clothing racks that walked out. So I didn't immediately jump to it, but when I started to go through the rack and then I realized it was a Johnny Was coat to put two and two together and you know, the rest is history. So I'll get to a point where I'll start hanging my coats again. I know I'm laying it on the deck. A lot of people might think that's a lazy process. It just, it's one that works for me, but I do have some like hanging dress forms that I've purchased recently. So maybe I'll start hanging them. Maybe it'll look a little bit better, but presentation wise, I think this is fine. Even with the sun, the, the colors are vibrant and it's a Johnny Was coat that's fabulous. Halmstad is the model of this jacket. And I think I saw one on Poshmark that had sold in the 250 to 300 dollar range there were none on ebay that i could find so i was really just kind of guessing i think this was 595 msrp if you were to buy it brand new don't quote me on that but i thought i remember seeing it at 600 so 300 seemed more than fair and i took an offer actually on this of 255 so this buyer um this buyer paid me 255 it cost me eight dollars and 99 cents so they did have it marked regular price and then i sold it in five weeks so that's perfect. I mean, within the 90 days time frame, within the range that I want to sell it for, and it's a beautiful coat. Let's face it. Let me take you through some of the images really quickly, just to give you an idea of what it what it looks like on the inside. That's what the tag looked like. Johnny was B I W Y A. I don't I don't even know what that is. I don't even know if I included that in the title. I'll have to look again. But amazing pattern, beautiful on the inside, 100% polyester, gorgeous coat. And um, the photographs didn't hurt me. So got 255 for that. And yeah, I didn't have BYA in the B I Y A in the title. So that didn't that didn't hurt me. But Johnny was, if you didn't know that was a bolo, definitely check it out. But yeah, it took me a couple of times to uh, to actually grab this jacket. So moving on here. Now um, this is an NSG bag, a no surrender. It's like a bug out bag, a tactical bag. When I found it. I was looking at Google Lens because I couldn't see anything on eBay that like I could recognize as an exact comparable. And so then I, you know, I went to the NSG website. I could only find a certain amount of styles of bags that they were selling brand new on their website. So I had to make the like the guess, if you will, that 
this was an older style bag and I was just really gonna have to guess on the price and that's what I did I listed it for 70 it was very very clean um, and I don't other than black onyx tactical backpack I have no other keywords in here because I just I just didn't know what else to put in there I mean bug out bag it, that might have been in my description but this was a style that I just couldn't find but the bag was very very clean pack strapped on everything worked properly very clean on the inside a good bag that I just really had to kind of guess on so it cost six bucks and I sold it for 70 it only took eight days to sell so I can't give you an exact model but NSG no surrender bags bug out bags, tactical bags, those are all the keywords that you'll want to use, but no surrender gear might be a bolo if you also find it. I just guessed and I, you know, I guessed right because it sold for 70 bucks. Next thing here, this was in one of my haul videos. So you folks that have been following me may have seen me pick this up. I don't remember what the price was, either 20 or $25. And um, Zojirushi, is that how you pronounce this? It is the BB-PDC Two zero model. Every time I see a Zojirushi bread machine, I just I look it up. Um, not every one of them is going to be like you're going to get max value for it, but a lot of them, hundred dollars pre-owned and over, and I've sold a bunch of them. So it's been a long time actually since I've sourced a bread maker. During COVID, I was picking these things up like they were going out of style, but got it home, tested it, it worked fine. Sold it, I think, in under a day for one hundred eighty dollars. So on twenty, that's more than fair. It was super clean and. Working price. This is one of those things that you know you, you use it one time, maybe two, and then it just collects dust. That's what happens to a lot of bread makers. They just they they don't use, they use them way less than they think they're going to, and they move on. So hardly had to do any cleaning. I did more after the fact actually than before, but sold this bad boy, and um, it took like I said less than less than a day to sell. So this is a great one. Keep your eye out for these bread makers. Next thing here, I sourced this at a garage sale. So if you guys are interested in, in more garage sale videos, let me know if you want to see that content in the comments because I don't do a ton of them and I'm open to the fact. I just, for, for whatever reason, sometimes like I get into the swing of things at garage sales, I'm moving fast and like it's just, it's sometimes it's more fun not to have to worry about filming even though I do enjoy most of doing that. But um, I will do it if you guys are really interested and you really want to see me out there with the, uh, with the neighbors chalking it up so this vintage coleman is a 500a from 1958 it's a it's not a if i'm saying a lantern it's a stove clearly you can see that it's a, that it's a stove it worked fine and i only paid ten dollars for it at the sale it was a great sale it did take me i think about nine months to sell but it did did it sell for my full asking price i think it did 170 yes so this was a great sale and i was happy to buy and hold on to it to get that max price and the uh, comparables, the sold comparables are gonna fall in line with that pricing, right around 170 for a, for a lot of them, you know, give or, give or take. But um, I don't think I was at the absolute top of the market for this one. It's just a good, unique, hard to find Coleman stove. Always look the lanterns up, always look the stoves up. I see a lot of these donated to church sales. So I get a good majority of them from the church sales around here that I frequent, but this was a good one, 500 a keep your eye out for it. Next thing here. Now, every I don't know if you guys have this problem, but I, I get lazy. And I, so lazy that I won't, I'll have something in my cart and then I'll get in line and there's like two or three things that I was kind of supposed to look up that I never got to looking up or I was supposed to inspect an item a little bit closer than I should, than I, than I otherwise did when I get there. And then I'm like pressed and compelled to just get in line and pay for the items and not make anybody else like wait behind me or, or stall the person that's ringing me up. So... This was missing a shoelace. If it, if I had seen this beforehand, if I had inspected it beforehand, I might have put them away because I'm not a military specialist. I don't know that market very well. I like to think that I know shoes pretty well, but if I had seen the fact after, beforehand that it was missing lace, I would have left it. I'm glad I didn't because these sold for 80 bucks. So 1966 military issue boots. I'm gonna show you how I know that. Let me maximize this. Um, because it's not readily obvious that it's from 66, but they are stamped at the top. And there's the stamp right here. So I don't know if this is S or B, R, J, T. I don't know what the significance is, or maybe that's a three. If you know what that is, let me know in the comments, because I'm not sure what that what the significance of the numbers to the left are. But this is clearly July of 1966, 766. So that's how I knew to put that in the title. And yes, it's missing a shoelace. No, that was not a problem. They're in decent condition, clean on the in uh, on the insoles. And I sold them for $80. And I think they sold pretty quick too. So they sold in eight days. 
and it only cost me $5.99 to buy them. So now, equipped with that knowledge, if they're missing a shoelace in the future, I'm not going to hesitate to pick them up. But this was a lucky find for me because it's not a market that I specialize in. It's not an item that I specialize in. And quite honestly, I wouldn't have picked them up if I had, uh, if I had seen that. So maybe I just got lucky. And we'll move on to the next item here. If you look at this, Frank and Eileen denim shirt, dress, dress, shirt, whatever you want to call it. The distressed part at the bottom, I almost think it came like that. I don't know women's, like I'm not an expert on women's clothing, but you know, looking up Frank and Eileen and then looking up this denim dress, clearly this was like a banger pickup, but I think it was manufactured like this. At any rate, I had distressed in the title and I don't think that that even like mattered. Like I don't even think if this was wear from use that it would have mattered because it just, looks cool it's just cool and it's a very like high-end expensive brand so frank and eileen denim shirt dress i had it listed for 200 and i think i took an offer of 145 yes I took an offer of 145 cost me five dollars and it sold in nine days so this was a fast seller pretty cool looking but yeah that distressed i think that's how it was made so yeah really exciting what does the back look like um there's a frank and eileen tag it was 100 cotton woven in italy and that's what the back looks like. A very uh, unique to me item because I had never, I have never picked up Frank and Eileen before. So boy, was I surprised when I looked up those comps. Great find, not a women's clothing expert. I will take it. Next thing here is a pair of dirty looking boots that have a lot of value. This is the type of thing that makes me love reselling. It's just, you just, you never know, right? And I mean, I'm sure there's some of you out there that are like, oh, I've been selling Dexter forever. We know it's high, high, uh, high end, or it's expensive, or whatever. But I didn't know necessarily know that. So these were big and heavy, and they had a worn look to them. The laces were fraying, and comps said to list these things high. So I had a size nine and a half, which I think was kind of a unique size. They still took a little bit of time to sell. It took me nine months to sell them, and they only cost five ninety nine. But I did sell them for one hundred and twenty dollars. And this buyer also left positive feedback so that was pretty cool i'll take you through some of the pictures of this as well if you didn't know these old dexter boots were a thing it's hard to see the d here there's a d logo like with a little arrow pointing right here maybe your eye will catch that when you see it next if you've never seen it before you can see the fraying on the laces but they're nice and thick the soles look pretty good the insoles look great where is the picture of the soles there we go so yeah, $120 later, um, I'm a happy camper. Keep your eye out for Dexter. These are made in the USA, style number W998-4. And we'll go to the next one here. I'm not gonna be able to help you a ton on this one. You get, when you go to the stores, after a while, you, when you see so much like junk or just regular average run of the mill everyday items, these types of things start to really stand out. And I think that's just what happened to me. I saw it on a cart, but I was like, oh, this is different. You know, it's like a, this volcanic crater rock art piece. Um, ben Diller is the artist and it is signed. I will show you the signature, but there, I didn't have a lot to go on as far as research goes price-wise. So this is another one where I'm like, I'll just throw it up for 125 and I eventually sold it for hundred. But let me show you the pictures so that you get a better look of like what the signature looks like. So pretty neat piece. Pele's Crater Bowl is what this is called. And there is the signature. Ben, they say Ben Diller, but yeah, a pretty, a pretty cool piece. It was, I used like thick bubble wrap to ship this. You feel like it might be delicate, but I packed it like really tight and it got there fine. Guy left positive feedback. So um, I know it arrived in one shape, but um, this might scare some people shipping an item like this, but I'm telling you, I just bare bones, like wrapped it in bubble wrap, made sure the bubble wrap was like thick and compact and the box, there was no, uh, shifting in the box. The, the thing really couldn't move and it got there safely. So a hundred bucks, it, I paid five for it and it took five months to sell. Next thing here, who knew George, I thought all George Foreman grills were like worth $20 in the resale market now. I, so I'm glad I, I just decided to not be lazy and look this up. So this Evolve grill system, I mean, they're they're amazing. I sold this for a hundred bucks. The red, If you find a red one, I think the red ones sell like with a, maybe a little bit higher frequency or maybe they're easier to find. I don't know, it just looked like the um, red ones sold faster or for more money, I can't remember which. 
but I still got 100 for this. Take a look at it here. And it was really clean, worked well. So another one of those things where they used it two times and it sat and collected dust and they just donated it. But um, it made me $100 richer. So that was a good find. This was in one of my haul videos. So I think it was $15 is what I paid for it. I sold it for 100 and it took two months to sell. So it was actually sold pretty quickly relative to how um, long I thought it might take. I thought I might have to wait till like grill season, but it sold. Keep your eye out for them. Next thing here, uh, I knew this was I knew this when I saw it. Had to grab it immediately. Not every lava lamp is going to make you um, a ton of money, but this was. And I didn't know that this was a unicorn. I just out of the corner of my eye, I saw the mushroom, and I was like, I gotta run to get this thing. So they had it priced at twenty dollars. As it turns out, it's a lava light lava lamp that is in very high demand. In fact, some of the things I like to do when I'm doing my research is anytime I use Google Lens for something and a Reddit thread comes up, I jump on Reddit because I get a lot of good intel and advice from the Reddit threads. And there was this was one of the ones that was like super in super high demand. Everybody was kind of looking for it, not easy to find. And this sold very fast. So and anytime that happens, um, I'm like, well, should I have listed it for 375? You know, maybe I could have gotten more, but 275 is fair. I'm not gonna overthink what might have been. I mean, if the thing could have sold for $600, well, then I made a $300 mistake, but I did sell it very quickly. I knew it would sell. I didn't know it would sell this fast and 275 on 20, you're never gonna hear me complain about that. So shipped to priority in a 12 by 12 by nine box and it is gone. So um, yeah, under a day, it took to sell. Let me show you the base. You know, we have a lot of things that are like, see the yin and the yang. We have smiley face, like very hippie vibe, the peace sign, all of the mushrooms. I mean, it really did have everything going for it. And it was definitely a lava light. So right there, lava light is the brand that is your indication that that's the brand that sells the, uh, sell the item, sold the item, but um, great find. I had to act very, very fast. To pick that one up. All right, next thing here. This is another one I had to move quick on actually. Um, nylon pullover from Starter, vintage Boston Celtics. This was very clean. So a lot of the neck on the nylon, like that starts to soil and it gets discolored and that becomes hard to get out. This was really, really clean. I think this buyer actually also left me positive feedback. Although I gave them a deal. I don't think I sold this for a hundred. I sold this, oh I did, I did. It sold for full price, excellent. <laughs> Um, yeah, let me maximize the pictures for you. I had, this is another one where I had to guess price wise because, um, there weren't any like exact comparables. So I just, I'm going to aim high and, you know, I have a size XL, which is, you know, for me sells pretty quickly, customarily, all things considered and really clean quilted interior, probably nice and warm. Um, and just in time for basketball season. So it did take four months to sell, but it only cost me $9. So what can I tell you? This is a great sale. Next thing here is a pair of, is it Luches? Luches, Luches, a pair of men's ostrich boots. One of the things I like to do, I'll give you um, a, little, a little snippet here. Sometimes like if I wanna juice my listing up a little bit, I'll throw in a keyword in the title that like maybe doesn't wasn't really the manufacturer's like color, but I'll do it to just try to catch someone's eye when they're scrolling. So I could have just left it at black cherry ostrich, but I threw exotic in there because um, it kind of counts, right? But that I'm just trying to like distance myself from the next closest thing, and you know, planting that seed in a buyer's head is like, well, this is exotic. Like maybe this one is more. Um, more of a premium listing, even though he or she might be comparing it to the exact same boot. I'm just kind of throwing it in there to just like give a pattern interrupt to somebody that's that's scrolling. Like I want them to stop and kind of catch that. So I'll do that from time to time on color just to try to stand out. So maybe you can try that too and see if that works for you. But size 13, Luches, I had these listed for 200, they sold for 150. They cost me $20 and it took me six days to sell them. So they were very fast sellers. I think the fact that they were size 13 really contributed to that. I'll show you the um, bottom of the boots. Very good condition. A lot of things working for me here. And that was a good price at 150. Next thing here, this was another thing that I sourced in a thrift run video, the Coleman Party Stacker. These come in a lot of different colors. So there's yellow, I think there might be a red and an orange. Um, 
I wouldn't have known automatically that this was a bolo, but I looked it up. It had the UPC and like the model number all over it. So it was very easy for me to look up. The fact that it was blue, I don't know that blue really made a difference price-wise, but I'm gonna list it high. I, do, I paid seven to $10 for it. And I sold it for, I think full price, 75, yeah, 75. It only took one month to sell, but these are definitely a bolo, the 6225 Party Stacker. Keep your eye out for it. There's a box at Walmart that is like a 24 by 16 by 19, something along those lines that this thing would just slide right into. And I kind of knew that um, when I saw it. And so for me, packing and shipping this was gonna be a breeze. I just cut the box down so that I'm not paying absorbent amounts of money um in dimensional shipping and get the thing out the door so very easy to ship very sturdy plastic a little bit of bubble wrap and it's gone good one definitely a bolo that you should keep your eye out for as well i'll show you the inside was nice and clean this thing had a lot going for it so good shape and good sale next thing here i'm going to repeat myself do not sleep on eddie bauer it's a great brand. It's a great brand for resale. Another Eddie Bauer shirt. This is a chore jacket or shirt. It's a chore jacket. It's vintage. This is a 2XL tall, another amazing size, size I love to sell. Cool quilted, quilted interior, great shape. I mean, these things really, really stand up. Here is a picture of this tag, wool-lined mountain parka, and I have all of that in my description. This one was also a full price sale at $75 cost me $8.99, and this only took five days to sell. So we've seen a couple of coats, but there are plenty of other Eddie Bauer items that you can resell that are in demand and make you money if you are struggling to find all of the obvious higher end brands or brands that people might think are like a step up from an Eddie Bauer or an L.L. Bean or whoever. Don't sleep on them. There's money to be made in this brand. Great sale, great coat. Next thing here, this little fella, we, I was, I had something in my cart and I don't remember what it was. And a woman was like, Ooh, that was a nice find. I, I wish I could remember. And she had this in her hand. And I was like, that is a very nice find. And, um, long story short, a, I, she put it back. She put it back on one of the, on one of the carts. So I grabbed it. It's a vintage 1950s Rushton Santa. That is beautiful. The only difference is if you look at the, um, sold comparables, most of them have black belts. This one has a white one. In fact, this isn't marked. So there's a very, very small chance that it's not Rushton. I'm almost 100% sure that it definitely is, even though there are no obvious markings. I saw some literal exact models when I was doing the search, and it, this is a pretty like in-demand like style of Santa face. So I was doing you know my best guesswork and saying this is probably as close to a guarantee as I'm going to get. So I put Rushton in the title. You're going to see I didn't do it on an item here uh, uh, in the next couple, and I'll explain why I didn't do it on that one. But I was pretty convinced that this was Rushton. He was super cute. I mean, it was just his facial features, the eye color, the beard. Everything was nice and clean. It cost me $15. I listed it for $100, but I took it off for $75 because I wanted to get it out before the um, holiday. So sold it for $75, and it sold in six days. So I'm lucky that she put him back because i scooped him up and sold him really quick all right next one pusheen this is another one i picked up in one of my videos if you find this let me let me rephrase that if i were to find it again i don't think i would send out an offer because i know i can sell this for 80 dollars. but i send out offers pretty aggressively and somebody grabbed this at 68 so that's what I sold it for. And I don't remember what I bought it for, $5, $6, $7, somewhere around there. Brand new with tags, Pusheen Hamburger collaboration with It's Sugar. So this is gonna be very hard to find, but the overarching theme is look the Pusheens up, look the Sanrio characters up, Hello Kitty, Choco Cat, Cinema Roll, look them all up because it's just easy to sell them right now, even the $20 ones, the $30 ones, but they turn up everywhere. And you know, anytime you find something exclusive, that's hard to find that people covet, you know, you make a sale like this. So just make it a habit of looking up those characters, Pusheen especially. So this was a great, this was a great sale, exclusive uh, one to find, and it still had the tags on it. So pretty lucky, pretty, pretty great score. All right, next thing here, women's jeans, not my wheelhouse, but when I looked up Western ethics, 
it looked like a lot of them sold for um, a high dollar amount. So I couldn't see I, my, this exact style if I remember correctly. And I'm shooting this very early in the morning. So like there's a little bit of a blue hue, which is sort of annoying to me. You guys might not notice it, but stuff got to get done. It's got to get done in the morning early, I, whatever. It is what it is. It didn't hurt the sale. I mean, I sold the pants. So um, let me take you through what they look like. The flags is one of the keywords maybe you could use. Definitely studded. I think I had that in my um, description or uh, in my title. So the NC measured to 36. They were a size three style 7402. Just nice looking pants. I had it listed for 75 and I sold them for 65. So pants in my area, most of the stores I go to around $9 right now. The jeans are at least. Um, and this sold within... This sold pretty quick. They sold within four days. So a great seller, but Western Ethics was um, was one that looked like they sold for much higher money, more so than they sold for a lower dollar amount. So I took a shot at 75, sold them for 65. Mom Jeans is one of the keywords I have in there. High rise, studded. You guys know the drill. Good sale. And we'll move on to the last one for the evening. Now, I put rushed in the title of the other one, even though it wasn't a guarantee. I don't remember what the brand was for this little fella, but I did not put the, the brand name that was coming up in the sold comparables because this one I was not sure of. So I used, and I, and I also couldn't verify if this thing was 100 years old or older, which is which would have allowed me to use the word antique. I think it, you know, a hundred years is what a lot of people consider an antique. So I put early in there, and then I do believe that it's the original paint. This little gnome, you guys saw me source this in one of my haul videos. I think it was ten dollars. I don't remember exactly what it cost, but he weighed almost seven pounds, eleven inches tall. Really cute doorstop figure, cast iron, and I sold him for his full price to 75. So at $10, that was amazing. It took two weeks to sell. I'm gonna show you some of the pictures and how they came out. Just left him the way he was, showed the measurements there and the weight as well. And he sold for 275. What an amazing sale, right? I mean, I'm so fortunate. So that was a good one. All of November was amazing. And that's 20 items that I sold. I hope you enjoyed that. All right, that's it. That's all I've got for you today. We'll do some haul videos here coming up, but I wanted to get you caught up on the numbers and uh, inspire you to go out and find those items in thrift stores, uh, estate sales, garage sales, wherever it is you do your sourcing. Happy belated holidays to everybody that was celebrating. Brendan here, Dad Planet, The One Man Show. I'm done. I'll see you in the next one.